Okay, I've been doing a lot of uh, Acid Twins lately, so to switch things up, I have an Everest Primus 29SL. And like other Primus, uh, Schlage Primus locks, this one has a sidebar on the right side that interacts with five finger pins down the right side of the key here. Um, they need to be lifted to the right height and rotated either to front, center, or back orientation to, to set that sidebar. And um, when you're picking this, I have this uh, finger pin pick I made. As long as it's thinner than the, the metal on the side of the key here, that means you're gonna be able to slide underneath the pins without overlifting them. So you don't need to worry about <coughs> oversetting them by sliding underneath. And this, this is never cut so that there's no metal. So there's always some metal here. So you can always have a pick that's gonna be that thinness, right? Um, then on the other side, unlike a normal Primus, this one has a, instead of top pins, this one has another sidebar on the left. So the SL sidebar here has seven pins. And while the Primus has standard pins, this one has um, pins that have serrations in them that act like false gates. So I have a piece of music wire here I'm gonna to use to tension this clockwise. And the we're gonna start with Primus pins. And those ones, they, um, they only have one gate, so you're just looking for one click. So there's a click from the first one. Now you could you could work on the rotation by pushing and pulling on this, and all you want to do is you want to push it and pull it until you can't push it and pull it anymore. It gets stuck, so I just pulled it a little. I go to push it, and I can't push it. So that one rotation is probably set. Go to the second one. All right, a little click there. Um, and you could work on the rotation on each of them, uh, or you could do it after you get all the heights set, however you want to do it. Little click from the third one. I think that was a little click from the fourth one. Or is it springy? If it's if you notice they're springy, they're not ready to be set. Um, or it could be that you overset something else, or you need to maybe go back and do some rotation. Uh, some rotation. If you do some rotation work, that can also um, drop the sidebar a bit further, and that'll bind. Um, allow other pins to bind, right? So if you find that you have pins not binding, go ahead, work on some rotations. Um, in this case, I can't feel where my pin five is for some reason. Oh, there we go, pin five. I, I didn't hear so much click, but I felt the core turn a little bit. I'm gonna work on some more rotations. Let's see if I can, it's pretty hard, pretty hard to get behind pin five if I wanna pull pin five. It's not so easy. All right. So I pinned, pulled pin four, and then I saw my plug turn. I dropped into a false set. That means my um, Primus bar is set, and I can now work on the SL bar coming from the left side. Uh, these ones, so I have um, this pick here. Actually, I'm gonna use a deep one to show this. I'm gonna go on pin one, and it's binding really tight. So that means that this is in a false gate. So I'm gonna let off some tension that'll allow me to lift this out of that false gate and get a click. And then I can check again, it's still binding tight, which means I just went into a second false gate. So I'll let off some tension, lift that one again, and check to see if it's still binding tight. Uh, I think that was just, no, it's binding tight, okay? But now it's kind of, it's kind of look, I, I can't even lift it anymore. So I'm gonna take this, uh, this hook, flat hook here, hook number one, and I'm gonna, Work it off the um, work it off the wording here. Oh, got a little click, and now it looks like we have some jiggle out of it. Okay, so that's probably probably in this true gate. So now I'll go to pin number two right here. It's binding tight, so I'll let off, and now it's wiggling. Pin three binding tight. I'll let go of some tension. Jiggling now. Pin four. Same deal. Pin five, binding tight. Okay, I got a click out of it, but still binding tight, so I got some more. Okay, pin five seems okay. Pin six, binding tight. Got a click out of it, nope. Another click out of it. Uh, might be jiggling a little. Did I drop something up front? Oh, I just tapped two and it went in. So to drop down a little bit, but not so much that it dropped down to the false gate, so it just needed to be kind of pushed up a little. Pin seven, it's binding. Click from it, it's jiggling really well. Pin six is not 
jiggling probably needs to go a little bit more. Got a lot of jiggle from six, a lot of a lot of jiggle from seven, six, five, four, three, two needed a little. It, it did that little click thing again. Let's check one, which is all the way up here. Okay, one just needs a little jiggle and we're open. Um, so one, again, it didn't drop down to the next false gate. It just dropped down a little bit. All right, so we're open here on this guy. And we'll take a look inside. So let's go ahead and give us some autofocus and zoom out. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's move the camera a little like that. Okay. So to gut this, it's really easy. Let's lock it up. And there's a little button back here, like almost any Schlage lock, except instead of having to unscrew it, it's just like a slight turn there. Um, you got your little pin and there's a tiny spring in there. Uh, now you just need your key. It's got the key in there. Oh, sorry. I'm skipping steps. There is a clip on here that's really weird, but it's fairly easy to remove. Um, there's this kind of gap here. You stick your screwdriver in, down into there and you can pry the clip away like this and just keep your thumb there so it doesn't fly away. So it's pries off and then you see it comes off. If I didn't have my thumb there, it would have flew all the way across the room. All right, so now that that's off, now you can stick your key in and um, there we go. For some reason it wasn't going in all the way. And now you can remove this. So when you're removing this, um, the only thing you want to do is catch the sidebars. Okay, sidebars are caught. There's nothing else in here. See, unlike um, unlike other locks, it doesn't have any holes up top for the Bible because there's no spring elements like that. So I'll take the um, SL sidebar off first. So that's this guy here. Okay. He's just got a straight bar there like that. You see that? Just a straight bar, okay? And two springs, so that's the SL side bar. You wanna make sure that when you put it back together, this gap here is on the top side. It matches with, I guess, that gap there. And then on the Primus side, we have this side bar, and he's got slots in them like that. And there's also two, oh, I didn't bring out any, I didn't bring out a set of tweezers. Okay, let's see if I can get these springs out with this pencil. So there's just two sidebar springs, tiny little ones. Should have brought a pair of tweezers. All right, and now <clears throat> you can start re removing the Primus uh, finger pins here. You can actually kind of see here if you look, that one needed to be rotated forward. Remember I said that was either center or forward. That one didn't need to be rotated at all. That one had to be rotated back. And these two both had to be rotated, rotated towards the front of the lock. So we'll take that out. And now you can pull these pins out. And these pins are not all the same. The, the, the way these work is they have a cut in the side with like a piece of metal in between. And that has to be rotated so that that can go into the slots of those individual slots on there on the sidebar, okay? So you wanna keep these in, in order, unlike on some of the twins where they were all the same. But there's five of these, and they have just all the same springs. There's a couple of them, all right? There's a couple more. I don't have my tweezers, so I don't know if I'll be able to get all of them out. There's only one more, maybe I can get it, yes, okay? So there's all, and that's basically as much as you can take apart on this without removing this crimped down top plate here. You can see how this is crimped down really uh, onto here. And that stops these um, SL pins from coming out. And they are all sprung in here. But if you look here, you can see how they have, maybe if we get a little closer, you can see how they have serrations on each of them. And when you push them up, you can see that that one has a true gate right there serrations around it and since it has a straight bar those are going to drop into those things and you have to lift these all up to the right height to to set them um, they all have springs and they kind of loop around onto the top and look like normal pins up here 
so they probably got a really funny shape but the springs are underneath this um, brass plate and uh, without doing some damage to it you can't get it apart any further than this and there are three four five six seven of those that you can easily reach from down here from the bottom of the keyway so anyways um, that's everything to the uh, Everest Primus 29 SL I don't know what the difference is between the, the Everest version and the regular Schlage version I'm guessing they're exactly the same um, but I also have an uh, I have an Everest SL so non Primus and that just has the SL side of the sidebar and a check pin but I'm waiting for the check pin to come because it was missing and then maybe I'll I'll pick that here as well so the Everest Primus 29 SL. Thanks. Bye.